In today's podcast, we'll be talking about the first certified residential active house in Slovenia. Our guest is the architect Lone Pfeiffer, Secretary General for the Active House Alliance. On the occasion of the opening of the Primus R House, Open House Slovenia organized a visit to show all the advantages of the active architecture to the public. The climate crisis is, above all, provoked by overusage of energy and by the emissions caused by energy production. The role of built environment is considerable, as the buildings use as much as 40% of the overall energy production. This data is worrying, but at the same time a cause for optimism. It means that new energy-efficient buildings and renovation of the existing ones hold a huge potential to reduce the emissions and energy consumption. The Active House Alliance is aware of this potential, but it looks beyond the question of energy. It advocates healthier living spaces with less environmental impact. The comfort and well-being of the individual is at the core of its goals, focusing on three key elements – comfort, energy and environment. The idea of the Active House was born in 2007, and in 2011 the non-profit organization Active House Alliance was founded. By now, its Active House certificate has been awarded to more than 100 buildings. One of them was built by Lumar Company in Dragomal near Domžale in Slovenia. This is the first family home with the Active House certificate in Slovenia, and it was shown to the public for the first time by Open House Slovenia. In the following minutes, you'll be able to listen to our interview with Lone Pfeiffer, a mentor and advocate of sustainability, design and innovation. She is also a board member of the Royal Danish Academy for Architecture, Design and Conservation, as well as board member of the Danish Architects Association. Pfeiffer holds a Master of Architecture degree from the Royal Academy School of Architecture in Copenhagen and a postgraduate Master in Energy and Green Architecture from Aarhus School of Architecture and Tsinghua University. Hello, Lone. Thank you for being with us. How are you today? Thank you for the invitation. I feel great to be in Slovenia and see how this uh, new buildings and new architecture is coming along and I'm very happy to be speaking to you about it. We'll be talking about active houses and active house principles. The family house that you visited today is the first building in Slovenia with an active house certificate. Tell us please, what are the main active house principles? The three principles of active house are energy, environment and comfort. In each of the principles are three indicators. So in comfort it is uh, daylight, it is uh, thermal comfort and it's air quality. In energy it is energy demand, energy sourcing and energy performance. In environment you have sustainable construction, environmental loads and water usage. You can go deeper into each of these parameters and investigate more. For instance, in the thermal uh, comfort um, indicator, you can go down and investigate the winter comfort levels, the summer comfort levels. And the same goes for the uh, air quality, where you can go in and see and investigate how is the air quality performing and designed for performance in summer and in winter and shoulder seasons. So there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of depth to the different indicators, but if you want to just at a glance see the performance of a house, it's easy to have a look at a radar picture where you can see all nine indicators and there is a number for each performance. So this house that we are in today, the Luma house, it has a radar for how is the performance of the house designed. I have to say that it's a very good radar. It is really impressing and uh, now I have seen the house and I can see that the quality is uh, extremely good. And the, um, the hallmark of Active House is that you go back and measure how is the house performing when somebody is living in it. And I think this house would be very close to the design performance uh, and parameters because it is really built in a high quality. This is not always the case, but um, the general of uh, the radar is that you are able to, if you as a designer would like to have a dialogue with your client about his or her or their um, wishes for the house, how do you talk to them about it? 
uh, you can discuss, yes, we would like to have a lot of daylight. And you as an architect would say, I can make your house with a lot of daylight. But putting a number on it and saying, like in this house, you get a level one, there is nothing better, according also to international standards. Then you know what it is and you are able to say, this is important for you, this is less important. Where do you want to place your, your money or your focus? Actually, you don't necessarily need an active house certificate. You can simply follow the guidelines and still achieve a better living environment. Is that correct? Exactly. Uh, it is not uh, obligatory uh, to do an active house that you have uh, the label. The label is, in, in, in fact, um, just the verification that the calculations that have been made for the house are correct. So it's a third-party verification. But if this is not important to you, uh, what is important to you is you would like to use the guidelines, use the tool, uh, test your assumptions. Maybe sometimes if you are a designer, you have some different choices and you say, what if I do this? What happens to the energy performance? What if I do that? You have some different design options and scenarios. And the radar tool is very good for this because you are able to say, um, put up some different scenarios next to each other and then you have the opportunity to do informed design decisions, which is very important not only for clients, but in particular for architects. Of course, but why should architects design and build houses according to active house principles? What are the benefits? I mean, the benefits that are different from other sustainable methods, because the clients, as well as architects, sometimes have our own ideas about the aspect and performance of the house. What is the most important part of the active house principles? I think uh, the uh, probably most important factor is that you include um, a design decision, uh, a design uh, concerns in the concept which are orientated towards the human senses. That is the most important thing in any building. It is also sometimes what is mainly forgotten because houses can be judged from how they look from the outside or they can be judged only by the cost or only by the energy performance or these three parameters. And that's where the active house um, comfort uh, dimension is important because the energy and environment, yes, you have to have it. It's hygiene parameters, you have to have your house in order, right leg, left leg, but the human senses is what matters to you, the daylight, the thermal comfort, the air quality, the acoustics, that is when you are inside the house. And if any of those parameters are not considered into the design, um, you will fall short. You will, if it's a living house, it will maybe not support you the best way for how your sleep quality is or how your kids' health is and how actually um, your life is, is lived. So if this matters to you as a designer or as a homeowner, you were asking it as a homeowner, I would always recommend that you remember to take these things into consideration and you should not accept Someone saying, yes, yes, the daylight is fine. Yes, yes, the air quality is fine. Okay, but give me a number because it is just as important as the taxes and the energy bill and the postal code. And it is possible to, to calculate it. So I think we need to have a lot more respect around these uh, issues. Most of Slovenian investors are aware of energy efficiency, especially when they apply for subsidies from the EcoFund for building almost zero energy houses. What makes Active House different from all these energy oriented principles known as passive house and zero energy, etc.? The, um, I heard about the subsidies in uh, Slovenia and uh, understood a little bit about how they are designed. And I have to say that I'm very impressed. I think you have some very good subsidy systems. Um, which enables you to build houses in a, in a high quality, which I think is uh, really remarkable. Um, so I have to commend um, this uh, construction in, in Slovenia and also the house builder behind uh, Luma House is, uh, is a very good one. The, um, the energy uh, efficiency numbers which are in the regulations and which are stimulated by the regulations 
is a must. It has to be there. Obviously, we have to 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 have good measures when we build houses or, or modernize uh, existing houses. Um, so you have to have that in place. But also, I have to say, this is something where we are aware since 40 years, maybe 70s, 80s, back to the oil crisis. We are aware that this is important parameters. And the passive house uh, was uh, conceived during the late 70s when the nuclear protests were very high. Um, so some somebody in the protest movement did not want the external energy to be of nuclear. So they developed a concept where they didn't have to have any external energy. So the passive house is an extremely good concept for autonomous houses, houses that don't need energy from externally. And it has developed some very good tools and was done by some very good engineers and also architects. I have a lot of respect for it. At the same time, we have to say that we are able to calculate these houses and design them and construct them. And we must not forget the comfort aspects, the, the human and the users. And these components have to be in level. And today maybe the, um, today maybe the users are not so much in focus in the energy efficiency measures um, because the houses are not uh, actually, uh, nobody knows how they are performing in real life. There is no connection between the, the, um, uh, the specifications and the regulations and how the houses actually work. So we have to reconnect this and the active house is trying to do exactly that to be the next generation after passive house respect all the good work, include all the good tools, energy efficiency, and then to have the balance between the comfort parameters. Can these guidelines be applied in retrofitting and renovations of buildings? Definitely. Um, we have a concept uh, developed called Renovactive. Uh, and it was developed uh, for social housing project in uh, Brussels. And now, uh, two weeks ago, the first Renovactive house opened in Slovakia. So not too far from here, um, an, an existing family house in a very bad condition where a family would like to renovate, modernize, contemporize their house. And they have used the active house principles to, to upgrade and uh, make a modern house which is suitable for them with good comfort and good energy. One of the biggest critical issues of our time is the climate change. To address this challenge, the Paris Agreement has been adopted almost worldwide and many countries already have or are working on their climate policies. How are active houses helping to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement? And how big of an impact could they have on reaching those aims? The climate crisis is, um, without a shade of doubt, uh, the biggest uh, challenge uh, that we have to resolve. Um, buildings play a huge part in our uh, climate footprint. 40, some say 50 percent, uh, is actually uh, consumed uh, by buildings. So we have a big obligation as a profession, in my opinion, to, to take this up as a challenge. At the same time, you can say there's also a huge potential that we offer solutions, that we seek suggestions and concepts and designs um, which are able to contribute to a solution. For the active house, what we try to do is to, you can say, we try to make it um, less rocket science. <laughs> we try to make it more uh, straightforward. The tool, the radar tool, is, is a tool where um, a designer, an architect, an engineer can have a discussion with a layperson who could be a big client. Um, I have talked to big investors. They uh, don't know a lot about buildings, they know a lot about costs and stuff and investment, but they also need to understand the importance of a building. And here the radar tool is, is forming a good bridge. And we always try to keep it very simple. And some of the other systems say you are too simple, you are too basic. They are probably right, because if you take out uh, the German system, DGNB, the American LEED, uh, UK BREEAM, they have much, much more to offer, much more complex, you get a lot more documentation and information. At the same time, I have to point out that they are for-profit systems. The active houses are not for-profit. Uh, nobody makes money on a system or a classification of an active house. 
uh, the alliance is only there to offer the tools and the education um, and we don't charge for making uh, active house uh, labels and we offer it uh, all as open source and for free. By the way, do you live in an active house yourself? I live in a building, uh, by um, an apartment building, by the famous Danish architect Arne Jacobsen, which he built in 1953. He designed it in 1948, he built it in 1953. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to be there. It's yellow brick and uh, the layout in my apartment is totally original. Um, and it really fits our purposes perfectly. Um, and we have we measure the indoor climate and it is uh, functioning very well. You can take the air through the apartment, you have access to the outside, very low energy costs. So even if there is no renovation done, it's uh, actually uh, still from 1953 a very good uh, design. So perhaps they already knew all this back then and then we sort of forgot about it and buildings have become very complex with a lot of technology and advanced materials that ensure a high level of comfort and living quality. So in a way we are pushing the technology and innovation further and further to achieve a perfect and constant indoor environment. Do you think that it is really worth it to achieve high indoor well-being? Would it be wiser to make buildings less complex and that we humans should adapt more to natural environment. For sure. I follow you um, 100% on that. I think the connection to nature, that we are in close contact with nature, that we have well a view to the outside, but also the ability to follow all the seasons in the house, we should be sure not to lose that. And we should be careful not to end up living in a synthetic environment inside a building where the air is controlled all year round. And because of concerns for, for winter efficiency, you get uh, air conditioning in summer. Because the house is not able to cool itself by night and have uh, natural ventilation. So we should maybe look a little bit back to some of the uh, old tricks and remember them because uh, you can achieve a lot in the way you design the house. The passive design measures what the house does with no help. It's a little bit like the food pyramid. You have it in Slovenia. You know, you have to eat the healthy stuff at the bottom and then you can, <clears throat> then you can add um, measures, um, active uh, elements, um, smart systems, uh, technology. And then in the end, on the top, you can add some solar energy if you want to. You can put some uh, PV cells on, um, but that only makes sense if you have done uh, the two uh, lower parts, the first two uh, parts, uh, the right way. So it's really about the design. And that's where the architects are very important because they offer the design and they are able to have all the aspects um, encompassed the old uh, principles of Vitruvius that you have to stand firm, you have to have the foundation, the, the, the planet, the planetary boundaries, we can only use the planet once. The utilitas is the, well, the utilities, the energy that we uh, use and, and how we use it. But if you don't have the third principle, Venustas, the, the, the beauty, it will not be loved. A house which is technically perfect may still not lose, may still be be, um, be derelict after five years because if, if nobody loves it and nobody cares for it and likes to live in it and use it, it will not stay existing. Uh, it's, it's something very basic. And that's the reason why you can see very, very old houses still existing today because people really like them. They have a lot of qualities. So we need to remember that. We need to remember to, to also design today those qualities. Lone Pfeiffer, thank you very much. The house called Primus R is designed to offer energy savings, efficiency and superior living comfort. Its rational floor plan features an open living area on the ground floor, combining kitchen, dining and living room. Its clean lines and modern compact design take this house beyond the usual prefabricated buildings. 
Besides the state-of-the-art technology, functionality and adaptability, its design follows the highest standards of the modern open architecture. These are the features that allow the house in Tragomel to be awarded the Active House Certificate. Thank you for listening to one of the podcasts of Open House Slovenia.